All right, today we're working on the assignment uh, Watts 3020 Roster. And this is an exercise that will allow you to learn uh, object-oriented programming concepts and you'll create a class roster. And just a little background, you know, we know from working with objects already in JavaScript that objects have been around for a long time. Um, and But those objects use prototypical inheritance, uh, which in classic object-oriented programming, you don't use prototypical inheritance. You extend your uh, base classes. And so in 2015, when we got ECMA 6, which is also called ECMA 2015, we got classes, the, the keyword classes, so that we could make these more classical object-oriented programs. Um, and so we're going to be using those techniques today here. Uh, let me get the fork going on this. So we'll get that going. And I have an analysis here because like I've done in all of my programming, I always like to start with a picture of some kind. And there happens to be very formal analysis for working with OO. Um, and this, in, in this picture, I've got a class diagram. Um, you may even sometime here in your career of UML, Unified um, Modeling Language. And class diagrams are kind of a part of that. So um, we're going to look at the to-dos um, for this code, and then we'll come back and take another look at this class diagram. Because I think when you can, and you, I encourage you to draw your own class diagrams when you're working with OO. Um, as with all coding, try to create some visualization for yourself. It really does help to you to see where you're going. So we'll come back to that. Uh, so, and before we start, I have a solution here. I just, I'll just show you um, how this project works. So, when we start our project, we get prompted to enter a course code. Um, then we enter the, the title of the course. And you can see I'm using prompts and I've got a default. Learning JavaScript. And this gives us this shell here. You see there's no teacher, there's no students. So the first thing I do is click on a button to set teacher. Again, a prompt and a default. And the teacher email. And the honorific, so professor, instructor, however you want to do that. So we've done a couple of prompts and that filled in our teacher. So the initial prompts gave us the title. We don't see all the data on the screen, but we did record more data than we, than we entered there. So now um, we're going to add students. So we've at, we can set a teacher because there's just one. But in this button click for add students, we're going to enter information about students. So we've got Becky Peltz, and then you can see it adds a, a row of students. And then I can add more students. So if I add another student, let's say John Doe. John at seattleu.edu. It adds another student. Then I have these two buttons, present and absent, where I can mark attendance. So if I mark present, 100%, and I record attendance in percentages. So I can keep that going. And then if I add absent, it kind of averages it out. Likewise here, I can add that and I can do absent. So this is kind of the base of what you're going to be developing with this um, code. Uh, so now if we look back at the diagram, you can see that what we're doing is we have a student and a teacher, and these are both have a base class of person. So a student class and a teacher class. And now classes are really, and this is really important, they're really templates for creating objects. So objects are instances of classes. And these kind of takes a while to sink in, but basically your code defines um, what one of these objects, what its properties are, and what its behaviors are. Um, but we can have inheritance when we can abstract out certain properties from two different types of class, then we can share those. And in your code, you'll see how you can, when you're constructing your object, you can take advantage of just using the same code to pull in the properties that are the same for both types of class. So here we have the name, email, username. 
And in student, we have an array for attendance, and then we'll have a calculate attendance function. Teacher, all we have different there is an honorific. Um, the course, we entered a whole bunch of information, um, some that you saw on the screen, some not. We have the code, title, description, the teacher name. Actually, not the teacher name. We have a teacher object, so that object is this whole amount of information. We have students, which is an array of students, so an array of these objects. And then we have a set teacher. We saw that button connected to this function. And then we have a mark attendance, where we are going to take the username and whether they were present or absent. And then we have calculate attendance. So these, this is a picture of the code that we're going to write. Um, so uh, let's take a look at getting that code going. So as we normally do, I am going to, let's see, here's, here's my class roster. Um, I forked it, and now I'm going to clone it. So let's see where I am here. Uh, that's 30, 20. Do I have a Watts Twip LS? Watts 3020 at CD, Watts 3020. Okay, so let's do a git clone. And then we can code Watts 3020 roster. So this will open us up in, um, oops. Let's see what's going on. Oh, code wants 3020 roster. This opens up the, the code application. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got an index.html. Well, let's run it before we even, I just say, let's just take a look at what happens when you run it without doing any coding. And it looks like we have another port open. So. Let's close out other work here. And we are here in our Watts, our forked Watts 3020. And we'll just open the live server. So without doing anything, we get this sort of list of Jane Doe. We get a a default course and a default teacher. And so what happens, what we saw in running is that all got kind of erased and we came up with a prompt. But this is what we're starting with. And if you look at the code for that was provided, you'll see you've got your link to the main and you've got some CSS. Um, and you've got some default course names and teachers and all of this. And I think you do want to come in and change this so you'll have some course in mind. And this will not get automatically updated by your JavaScript. So, or actually, no, this will. This is your H1. So this is, this is all, this is not your title. Your title, this is what you'll want to change is your student name. Let's see, so you want to have that. And then, of course, you can leave the description as the pro project. But yes, all of this HTML will be changed by the JavaScript. And you're probably starting to get used to seeing that, although you haven't been writing the code for it. But what's happening in the code, it's all that code that you see at the bottom that says don't change it unless you're doing some stretch goals is... Um, you're seeing that it's uh, if you if you've looked at it, you'll see that it's grabbing elements out of your HTML and assigning values to inner HTML string values. So that's something that you'll be getting into in a, in the next assignment, and you've been working with it already for a while. But really, in this assignment, your focus is on building out your object model and and that is basically coding your classes and you've got a number of to do's in here and what we're going to do here today is just work through these to do's so let's start in here um, we have 
instructions to create a base class person. So that's going to be from our class diagram, this, this class. And it tells you that it has a name, email, and a constructor. Now a constructor is something that it's a, it's basically a function that you're going to find in every class, in every bit of code that creates a class, because this is the function that you run to instantiate the class. And you instantiate the class by calling new with the class name. And that triggers a call to this constructor function. And it's always called constructor. And so let's write this class. Um, this should be, uh, let's say this should be, a, the, we're going to see that the, the syntax for creating a class is the word class and then the name of the class. Classes are usually named with a capital letter. Objects, when you create an instance of the class, are usually a lowercase letter. And that's not handled that case by the syntax, that's just the convention. So constructor, and we're going to take in a name and an email. And then using, and then we are going to set our instance name equal to that name. And so we're going to talk about this here because this is a keyword that indicates the current instance of this class, so the object, and it is used to refer to properties and functions within that class, within that instance of the class. So there are we're not going to have them here, things called static classes and instances where it applies to all instances of a instantiated class. But when we talk about this, it, it refers to just this one instance. So if I create an instance of Becky, then that is a single instance of a person. Um, and so this refers to the name Becky specifically. So these, and so what we're doing with this here now is we're setting up the properties of this person class. And we're told that we should make take the username out of the email by using the by knowing that the at symbol precedes it. So we actually know how to take something. So let's say our email is, you know, Becky Seattleu.edu. We know that how we can get this item out is we can use the split command to split on that at symbol and then take the first element of the array that's produced by that. So what I can do is take email split on the at and then take the first element. So that's just using what we know about arrays um, grabbing elements out of arrays and using the split command on this string to split this string into an array of two elements. The first element we would have would be Becky and the second element would be seattleu.edu. So that's a really nice way to use that split command to grab this username. Now the username doesn't appear on the page, but we're going to see that it's useful for some interior logic that we use in here. So that creates our person class. Now the next step is that we're going to extend that person class and create a student class. And it's going to have a constructor. It's going to have some properties um, and it will have a function um, that will take that will be used to uh, take attendance. Actually, it will have a function. Let's see. So we're going to have this instructor. It's going to have a, a property called attendance that will have an empty array, and this is where we will keep track as we take attendance of whether a student was there or not. Um, and then it says we're going to call a super function that will actually be what 
calls the base class constructor. So this is another keyword and standard um, way of having inherited classes uh, get call for the values of their base class, call for values, properties, or methods. So let's see how this looks. We're going to have class student extends person and we'll have a constructor function. So every class that we write will have a constructor function. And this constructor will take constructor will take a couple of parameters. So when we go to call new on our student, we're going to have to send it a name and an email. And then we're going to call super and super is is because we're extending person and this is again this is the syntax and this is the keyword to indicate I'm going to do classical inheritance from student to person. And the super for that will be the constructor for person, which expects name and email. So I will just call super name email. And then um, I will just create a property this attendance equals this empty array. So if we look back at the picture here now, you can see that we've created attendance. We've created this function or this property attendance, and it's an array. And we this arrow that points back, this is a standard too, that when you're inheriting, this arrow points to the base class. All right. Um, we're also going to create a method on student called calculate attendance. So to do that, we just write a function. And we it's a little different than writing a function out in the global scope. Since we're inside of a class, we just name the function calculate attendance. And what we're asked to do here, so here we're down here, calculate attendance. Uh, and notice, you know, that again, the syntax is that the person, the classes are scoped using the curly braces. The, all the functions, the constructors of function are scoped using curly braces. And then any, or sometimes called methods, which are really functions, are also scoped like that. So we create this calculate attendance. And this is going to give us a percentage of the days that the student was present. So we're only calculating the days present. And to do that, we're reporting it as, um, as a percentage, but we, um, the attendance should be recorded. So we're assuming that the attendance array contains zeros and ones for whether they were absent or present. So the percentage is an average of all of the values in this array. So, um, one of the things I like to do, and oh, and the, so the input, to, there's no input to this because we're going to be referencing um, this, this attendance and we have access to it because it is inside of our, our object. We'll be able to refer to it as just this. We don't have to pass it in. Um, and we will be responding with some percentage. So that's a good idea to think about is that what is this? This thing will take there will be no parameters, but the output will be wanting to return a string that will be a percentage of the attendance. So one of the things I like to do, and this may be a stretch, in, it's listed in the stretch, I believe, but um, I like to check to make sure that there is something there. But So first thing I'm going to do is check to make sure that there are values in this attendance, that, it's, that attendance has even been recorded. So attendance dot length. So I want to make sure that attendance dot length is greater than zero. I'm going to do that bit of logic. That just says, you know, if I'm not going to do any calculation, I can't do any calculations if that's an empty array. So if it, if it isn't, if it is an empty array, I'm going to return, uh, we can just say 
So nothing in the nothing in the attendance array returns zero. But if there is something in there, I'm going to do some processing. And what I need to do, I want to end up calculating a percentage, but first I need to count up how many days that they attended. So basically I'm going to iterate through this array and count it and just add it up. So it's going to be the sum of a bunch of zeros and ones. But to do that, I'm going to create a counter. And you can call it whatever you want. It's a local variable. I'm using let. It's only known within this little chunk of this if. And I'm going to use a for loop. Let mark of this attendance. So I'm going to iterate through this attendance as an array. I'm going to pull out a little local variable mark, which will be a 0 or a 1 value. And I'm going to say counter plus equals mark. And I hope you looked at this through your debugger, and you can see how you're going to be stepping through, and counter will be just, you'll just be adding a 0 or 1 to it. So once I've got the counter, that should add up if I had like 5 days present and 5 days and absent, I would have 10 total entries and this counter would equal 5. So now I'm just going to say, I'm going to create another, I like to use really long names here. I don't, I don't have any reason to skimp on the names of these things. Um, so I tend to create very descriptive names. This, this was kind of something that came in with object-oriented programming is, you know, the comp you don't have to worry about the length of the names. We have ways to deal with minifying code. So this helps it make it more readable. I don't even have to add a comment. And by the way, commenting is really good, but like I would never put a comment like set counter to zero. That's a, a useless comment because pretty much that's readable, but that's what I'm going to do. More likely, I'm going to add comments like, um, you know, find the total total number of days present. That's a useful comment because here I'm iterating, I've got a local variable, I may not understand all this, but here I can say, oh, I'm going to run a loop and at the end I'm going to know the total of days present. But let's just say, so um, I'm going to, to get the percentage now, I'm going to do counter divided by this dot attendance. So attendance dot length. So this is just a standard average calculation. I've summed up all the values in an array, and I'm going to divide by the number of items in the array. So if I had five days present out of 10 total days recorded, I'd have 50%. So this is just some basic averaging calculation. And then to make it into a percentage, I need to multiply by 100 because counter, if this was 5 divided by 10, that would be 0.5. And then I want it to be 50%, so I multiply by 100. So there's a calculation for average. But I, I'm going to use, I want it to, I don't want a big long, you know, if sometimes when you do these divisions, you get 10 decimal places. Well, we don't want that. We want just maximum two decimal places. So in my return, and I need to have a string percentage, I'll use these tick marks to get me some interpolation of variables. And I'll take my attendance percentage, and I'll call the two fixed on it. And I'll add a percent sign. OK. So at this point, I now have satisfied my input-output agreement on calculate attendance. I'm not really in a position to test this yet because I haven't coded a lot of, you know, the input from the user. But I'm just going to continue building out this um, in the order that we see it here, building out this model. And if we have errors, we're going to just have to go in and debug them. But we've already got some proficiency there, so, so we're going to, we won't, we shouldn't have a problem with that. Um, so we've calculated this um, attendance. Let's put that up there. And so again, you'll want to remove all your to-dos. It's okay to leave kind of this, the, you know, really remove these instructions. You could add a comment, you know, create person class as a, as a create person class as a base class, create three 
uh, student as a inherited class from base from person and so forth you can comment like that but do remove these instructions i mean this could end up being something you'd put in your portfolio you don't want to have it look like a class assignment so much all right so the next step is we're going to set up a class called teacher that extends person so again now we're creating this class teacher and we just use our standard class syntax class teacher extends person and we have a constructor and we're told what do we know well we know that we, we know that it's got a base class of person and person requires name and email so our constructor for teacher when we call new teacher we better supply name and email um, but we also know that there's an extra bit of information we need, which is the honorific. So we're going to have to be sure to supply all of these pieces of information into our constructor. Um, and then we'll call super and pass on the name and email. That'll record for us the name, the email, and calculate the person's username. And then we will set the honorific. And that is all that we need to do for this teacher class. So because we don't have any methods or functions to add to that. So the next step is the course class. And we do have a lot of information to gather on the course. So you can see there's a lot of information in here. Some of it we are going to prompt our user for. We saw that we had to prompt for course code, title, and description. So those we'll be prompting for. But um, for this constructor, uh, we'll take that information that's prompted and we will, if this is given to you, we'll set these values. We will initialize the teacher as null. Once we have a teacher, when we call that set teacher, then we will be able to uh, fill that in with a teacher object. And our student array is going to be initialized as empty. So we've got all of the properties set up there in the constructor. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to code the add student method. So this is the method that we, when we push that button to add a student, it triggered some prompts, right? And then we could create a new student and add it to the class. So how do we do that? We are first going to create this method add student. And again, there's we don't have to use the word function like we do when we're creating a function in the global scope. Or so we just say add student. And we are going to have a number of prompts to add a student. We're going to say, oh, let's see, let name equal prompt enter student full name. And if you want, you can add um, a default as I do just to make it easier to test it. You can then you can test it with that and take that out when you deliver it, but um, it is useful for testing. Email equal prompt enter student email. And really for testing, you should try more than one set of data, right? Because different data can cause different issues. And that's how you can find your issues is to try different data. So. Don't just get it working with one prompt, uh, one set of prompts. Be sure to try out different sets of data. That's pretty important for testing. But to get this going, I will do this. And then um, the next thing I need to do is to create the student. So I've gathered up the information that I need to call student. Again, we're going to be calling, we're going to be creating this student and the constructor's looking for name and email. But now we're going to actually instantiate a student. So get an instance of a student from that class. 
and I'm just going to call it new student. This is a local variable in this add student function, but I'm going to use the keyword new to say that I need that I want a new student. New student name email. So once you have those templates, these things kind of just fall together. Um, so and then um, I'm here in the course. I have an array of empty students. I want to add that student to the to the course. So I essentially want to add that student to the array. And we know that we can add to an array with push, the push function, and we'll just add that student. So that's how we get the information, create an instance of this new student, and then push it. And once this array holds it, even after we leave this function and this new student uh, locally scope variable goes away, we still have an instance of that student. As long as we maintain a reference to that object, we, it will not go away. It'll be available to us. And when we put that student object into this student's array, we are creating a reference to it. And that student's array is a property of an object so that as long as you have a reference to that object, that it won't go away. And that's something that's, that has to do with memory, how memory is managed with, and it's a very valuable and it may take a while to sink in how that all works. But the fact that we are going to leave this add student function and we have this new student, that's not a problem because we put that object, we have pointed to it essentially in this array. So the next thing that we want to do is we have uh, added the student to the this.students array. Then we need to update the roster by calling update roster. And so in order to do that, it's telling us we need to pass a reference using this. So, so roster, so this is a function that we're not writing. Well, let's say what, we, what it's telling us to do is we need to call update roster and pass it this. So, but what we're doing is we're taking this as a, as a reference to this instance of course that we're creating. And when we say update roster, let's see what happens there. We'll see that the update roster code is down here in this section that was written for you that you are not needing to edit. So you don't want to edit this unless you have a specific reason like you're working on a stretch goal. This function update roster takes this and now points to it using the word course. So it's now referenced locally in this function as the word course. And this function is all about taking your object and putting data out onto the page. So again, you're going to, and we're, we're going to be learning about this next week, um, how to modify the DOM using data. And so you'll see that it, it, this is going to just basically, this course in here will be pulling apart sections of your object and putting them onto the page. So unless you get into stretch goals, um, which I encourage you to do, you don't have to do anything. You're just told here to call update roster. And then whatever changes that you've made to the student, to adding the student to the course, will be reflected on the page. So that completes, um, wait, no, we still have some more. We're going to do a set teacher on the course. So let's take a look at set teacher. With set teacher, we had a button that we could just press to set the teacher. Now in the model, the teacher, there's only one teacher in the course. We don't have an array. We don't have a collection of teachers. We just have one. So with students, we added because we were adding to this collection. With teacher, we just have one. So um, with set teacher, it's a similar process. We have to collect some data, but we will not be uh, adding to an array we will be instead just setting a value. So let's see how that works. To 
get we were because teacher has a base class of person we need the name and email so we're going to just go ahead and prompt for those enter full teacher name and I'm going to go ahead and be the, the teacher and the student for this. Well, let's make it somebody else. I'll make it Sean, the the old direct, our former director. Sean Ryder is a teacher, and my email equal prompt. Enter um, teacher email, and we'll just say Sean. For it. I, again, I am just defaulting it to help with the testing. Use the EDU. And then the honorific. And an honor, I never had heard of an honorific before, but an honorific is a, it's a salutation, you know, like Mr. or Mrs., but, in, but here it will have it be a professor. So we'll enter, enter honorific, and we'll make the, him the professor. And then this teacher equals new teacher, name, email, honorific. All right. And then, so what we've done here, just like we created a new student, once we'd gathered up the data we needed, we're creating a new instance of a teacher. We're setting it to this courses this, or to this um, local function, to this, yes, to this courses this. Remember we have a property teacher. So that does the set there. And then we also are going, and we are going to, update the roster. And again, the update roster just causes the page to be updated with the data from the current state of these objects. All right, so this gives us a way to reset the teacher. Obviously, we can call that set and change the teacher very easily. Um, we can add students very easily. We don't have a way to remove students, and that's one of the stretch goals. Um, we don't have a way to keep from adding the same student many times. That's one of the stretch goals, how to keep that from happening. But we do have a way now to add teachers and students. That leaves us with this final requirement that we need to mark attendance. And those were those two buttons off to the right of the student. Let's see if we still have that up here, marking them present and absent. Um, we need to implement a function that can do that. So in creating this mark attendance function, we are going to have to discriminate. We have to handle two cases. And we're told that the deep, so we have to know whether they're being marked present or absent because we're gonna use a zero for absent and a one for present. Um, the default behavior should be to mark the student present. The alternate behavior should be to mark them absent. And I think you need to look a little bit into the code that is recording the button push in order to really see how that works. So let's just take a look. If we look at where this is used, and again, this is down in the code that you are not writing, but I encourage you to look at it. Um, where we're handling a button click. So we are listening for a click on a button and we're gonna mark attendance. And you can see there's two, but two types of two buttons, one for present and one for absent. And that um, one of them is you know, going to be labeled present and one of them is gonna be labeled absent. And all we're gonna send is the username. But it looks like here, if you look at this, that, so if you mark, so the default is present, we don't, we just send in username, one argument. But when we mark them absent, we send in username and the word absent. So that means that by default, we can say they're present, but we better be able to take a variable, a parameter to deal with this absent. And the way that we're gonna code that is Let's take a look at that. We're going to do mark attendance. 
We know there's going to be a username in both cases, but we're going to have a status. So I'm going to name this uh, variable, and you can name it whatever you want. It'll end up being local to this uh, function. But I'm going to set its default value to present. And by doing that, um, any, any call to mark attendance will, can have either one or two arguments. It, could, it has to have a username, but it could have nothing or it could have something besides present. And we saw that it will have the word absent when it's marking it absent. So let's see how we can deal with that logically. So first of all, um, we're also told that we need to find this student in here. So um, before we can, let's see, we need to use the find student before we can, you know, do anything with their, with their attendance array, but that is provided. So this method is here for convenience, the find student. It just takes a username and it uses an array function to find the student in the array and it returns the found student. So it uses the name, but it's gonna return an object. Remember that student array contains objects of students. So it knows all about the student, the name, the email, and it has the attendance array. So let's see how this works. So we'll say let found student equal this dot find student username. So again, we're going to preface find student with this because it is a, an, a function defined inside of this class. Okay, so it's defined, again, we're still inside of this course class. We're using the course instance to mark attendance but we're going to find the individual student within the course before we can actually mark their attendance. So the first thing I want to do is test if they really are present. So, and actually I like to use the triple equals and this is a artifact of JavaScript that we have double equals and triple equals and triple equals really takes into account type as well as true or false because zero can be false as well as actual Boolean false. Anyway, that is something for your reading, but I like to use the triple equal. So present, so we're gonna say if they're present, and now they, the ways that they could come in present are one, mark attendance gets called with just username alone and then defaults to present, or somebody calls mark attendance with the username and the actual string present. And we know in our code below that it gets called with just username because that's the default to market present. So setting that and then what I'm going to do is take that found student. So now I have a reference to the student that I'm interested in. I'm going to get their attendance array and I'm going to push the value one. So that is how I mark somebody present. And if they are not present, so if I receive Specifically in this code, it will be the word absent, but I don't really care. the The rules are that they will that it will default to present; otherwise, it's absent. So I'm not even going to bother to test for the word absent. I'm just going to say, if it's not present, then I'm going to mark them absent, and I do that by pushing zero. So that is how I actually. Um, mark attendance and then I'm going to call update roster as I always do when I make changes to the model to update the view which is what you see on the page we call it the view um, so update roster this and that's going to have a lot of ripple effects changing that um, attendance because we know that there is the function that calculates attendance that uses that attendance so the net effect is that it's going to modify what you see in this attendance. By clicking on one of these, it will add to the array that will then cause a calculation to occur on the percent attendance, and it will update the view with that. So that can all take kind of a while to sink in, um, so don't worry about that. Um, 
One of the ways it can really help you to visualize all of this activity is to use your debugger and step through the code. So put in some breakpoints and then click a button and see what happens. So that marks attendance. Um, I think that we have done almost all the to-dos. Let's see, we've got our course, we mark attendance. That finishes off the course. By the way, one thing you can do that can be helpful in Visual Studio Code is if you look off to the left here, there's these pluses, these roll up code. So, and when you write a class, you can click on that and you can see, yes, that's nicely balanced um, curly braces. And my course looks done from down all the way down to there. But let's see, we have a couple things left to do. Remember how when we run this program, it initially prompts us to set up the course with the course code title and description. We need to write the prompts for that. So let's just get that done. Let course code equal prompt. Um, enter the course code and we'll say watts 3020. Oops, and I've got my, got my live server on, so I'm gonna turn that off. And that takes care of the course code. I'm gonna use copy and paste because these are very similar prompts, but you know, once again, being careful because we wanna keep, have these, these are used in the view, these variables, we want them to be named correctly. Uh, you notice it gives you the exact name it's looking for. So course, title, and we'll just say intro to JavaScript. And let course description equal prompt enter the course description. And you know, learning to code JS. You'll see me refer to JavaScript as JS as well as JavaScript. So, um, and then what do we have? We have a new course object. So to kick it all off, remember we need to gather, we need to create this course and we need a prompt for that. Well, no, we don't. We've got all the data that we need now. Um, we need to pull all this data together and create an instance of the course. So I'm just going to say my course equals new course course code course title course description. Okay. So I'm using a let here. I'm using lets, but since I'm in the since I'm in the outermost layer of this this page, let actually turns out to create something kind of global in this at least within the body of this page. So as you come into this page, you know the interpreter comes in. Oh, it says I've got a class. Okay, I don't have to do you know I just have to you know make that. Uh, into a template. I make that into a template template. I'm not really running anything that you're gonna see on the screen with this code But all of a sudden here in the let I do execute that and I, it does cause the prompts to come up And when I get to my course, I do execute this new course. I create this course instance and We know that from what goes on in there that we're going to call update roster that I'm going to see I'm going to see the course title and description posted and it's going to have an empty student array so I'll see no students at that point. So this will cause an update to the view right there. And that's how we kick it off. So let's see if this is running. Let's see if we've done this without any mistakes. All right, so we're getting our prompts. And we've got our course title. We see the teacher's not set, but we do have the course description. So let's try setting a teacher and we'll make it Sean Ryder. And we can see that that set the teacher and it gives his honorific and his full name. 
And then we can try adding a student. And we can see that added correctly. We can try marking present. Uh-oh, that's not working. Let's take a look at if we have an error. And found student is not defined. OK, let's go take a look at that. So for some reason, found student is not defined. Uh, let me just try debugging that. So I'm going to click on present. Um, I've got the username. Let me just take a look at the course itself. And I'll drill down. I'm over here on the left. And I can see Peltzar is in there. So it's going to look for that. Let's step into this fine student. And we have this student. And Peltzar. Peltzar. OK. Let's just see if this works out. So I would expect that since this dot students, you can see has my name and there is a pelts R there. And I am looking for a pelts R that I should end up in this statement trying to return that. And I do. And that is equal. So the next step is I should end up at found student. And I do. So that looks good. So I'll step out of that function. Found student is there. OK, status is present. So the next step is found student. And found student is not defined. OK, what's going on there? So one of the things, let's see, we know that found student is there. But it's not there. Ah, typo. Look at that. You probably saw that already. Found student. And here it's found student. OK, let's go fix the typo. And we'll try this again. So up in uh, Mark Attendance, I have student. 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 So yes, typos are our enemy. Um, let's try that again. And we'll just take that in. We'll set the teacher. And now we'll add a student. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. OK. And but we'll see if our mark present works. OK, looks good. Absent, good. Two presents, two absents, 50%. OK, I'm happy with that. I'm going to show you something, though, um, that you will run into. And I've, this is a, a um, stretch goal to handle it. Is if, I do, if I add another student and I don't change this, I'll end up adding myself many times. Um, but when I mark present, notice it's updating this first student. That's because the find student is going to find, it's going to, it's, I'm allowing it to enter multiple students with the same username. I'm assuming username is unique, but I'm allowing it to enter. So you might want to look at how you could prevent that as a stretch goal. So, but anyway, this is the base ap application. And um, I hope that you understand kind of some of these fundamentals of creating object-oriented programming, creating classes, setting up inheritance, using the new command to instantiate and create an object. Uh, and certainly, let's talk about it in the discussion board and on Slack. Um, but that is, this should get you going. All right, happy coding. Happy coding, but not quite done. Let's go back and push this up to um, GitHub. So we've finished our coding. You might want to go back in to your code and do some commenting. Definitely clean up the instructional comments. Um, but things that you did that you figured out, you know, and how they work and you want to make a little note to yourself or to anyone reading this code, comments that are well formed can, can really make your code look a lot better. All right, but let's take a look here at um, the adding it to GitHub. So get, oops, don't want to do that. Let's close out live server. So git add git. 
um, and I want it to just be um, updated code and get push. Okay, and then that takes me out to, let's see if we can close that out, and my, okay, we'll go out to settings, and we will set it to the master branch, and grab that link, it's not quite published, but we'll get that link here and do this edit and save okay and at some point this should be published and um, oops yeah let's take a look this should get published sometimes there's a delay uh, looks like it should be published now and slight not bound Hmm, give me a moment. All right, so the problem was I hadn't checked the enforce HTTPS, so I'm using, you know, a personal domain, uh, Becky Peltz Me, and so I need to check that enforce HTTPS, and when I do that, it upgrades the link to HTTPS uh, instead of HTTP. That gives me encryption, and that is my goal, and so... That is That was why that wasn't rendering right away. All right, well, I hope all of that helps you and that you enjoy learning about um, this object-oriented modeling and object-oriented programming. Um, and you will, when you get to working in the DOM, the DOM document object, no, document object model is what um, is how we programmatically access the view, which you've been having the code provided so far you will have a better understanding of how objects and their properties and methods work. So, thank you.